R.J. Barrett is the best player on the Duke Blue Devils in my estimation. But Zion Williams has the greatest upside. I think R.J. Barrett has an upside as well, but he is what he is. Just a smooth, silky player that could do a multitude of things. I, I would never be upset having him. But Zion Williamson is a physical freak of nature. He's 6'6", 6, 6'7", 6, about 280, with a 46, 47-inch vertical leap. I think he needs more coaching. That's why I'm happy he's with Coach K, because I think he gets a bit too excited at times. He's one of those guys. He's a better version, because obviously, think about it. This Max and, and, and Jay, y'all will appreciate where I'm going with all of this, okay? Think along the lines, he's a forward, he's not a center or whatever. But do you remember when Chocolate Thunder, Daryl Dawkins was in the NBA, God rest his soul? This guy, <laughs> obviously two different positions, no game like Zion Williamson. Please don't get me wrong, he was a center. And he was Chocolate Thunder, just crashed, bra crashed backboards and stuff. But he was a walking foul waiting to happen because he was such an imposing physical, freak, uh, physical creature who played with emotion and adrenaline and, 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 and all of that stuff that he was a foul waiting to happen. And so when he would go against Boston or somebody like that, they were like, we can't match this guy's physicality. What we'll do is outsmart him. You look at that play last night when he fouls spin, out. Yeah. Zion Williamson drives into the lane and spins. Listen, the guy was moving true enough, but a lot of guys are going to do that with Zion Williamson because they know that chances are they're going to pull off getting a foul in their favor because of his extreme physicality. I worry about that with him, but I would love him at Madison Square Garden. It would be special with him and Porzingis. It would be box office. I would love it. Zion Williamson's my new favorite athlete. Not only is he must-see TV, but his reaction to being asked about the Knicks means he gets it. James Dolan has reduced the Knicks to a laughing stock. James Dolan, you have taken New York City and Madison Square Garden and reduced it around the world. You have to a laughing stock, to the most talented guy. You know, people mistake what a unicorn means or what a black swan means. They think unicorn means one of a kind. No, uni refers to the horn. It's that it doesn't exist. It's imaginary. And a black swan does not refer to the bad guy. It refers to an unlikely event. And they, have, they would have two players, the Knicks, if they got Zion Williamson, who are both unicorns and black swans. Porzingis is imaginary, a seven foot three guy who plays the way he can. Zion Williamson's imaginary, that doesn't exist. And they're both extremely unlikely, obviously, to have those two on the same team. And by the way, that Zion Williamson, no one in the history of New York City, because Dr. J played on Long Island with the Nets in the ABA, has ever been above the rim at a, at a really MVP caliber or all-star caliber level. Apologies to Latrell Sprewell. There's never been a Kobe Bryant or even a Vince Carter. Not with the Knicks. Carmelo below the rim. Patrick Ewing a center. Walt Clyde Frazier for all the pizzazz. A very good fundamental point guard, right? They've never had this. If Zion Williamson pans out to be an MVP caliber, even just perennial all-star player, in New York City above the rim with Chris Stapp's Porzingis, he will be the number one star in sports in the world on planet Earth. And the fact that he gets that the Knicks are a laughing stock makes me like him even more. By the way, the other comment he made recently was he talked about his defense. He said MJ was defensive player of the year. I want to be as good on the defensive end as on the offensive end. Zion Williamson, I love you. Keep doing this. I, I think he has a chance to be one of the most special players we've ever seen. And if he does get lucky to go to a team like the Knicks, I would say it's because of a guy named Fitzdale, which will be all the luck. Now, I understand the market. The market is incredible. But I think it's also the grassroots style in which Fitzdale helps talent and builds talent which will be the key for him. I watched Zion Williamson last night, and, of course, we're always going to talk about the dunks and the explosiveness, the potential marketing dollars. I can't imagine what his shoe deal is going to be like with Puma coming in the game and New Bounce as well. But I saw a huge room for growth last night. My man still does not have a mid-range game. My man still doesn't pivot and reverse pivot when he's down on the ground, when he attacks the rim. He's still trying to jump over everybody. Now, look, once in a while, when you're at the next level, you're going to be able to catch somebody off guard because of his elite athleticism. He will be able to catch an AD or a LeBron or a Jared Allen, some of the most elite defenders in the league. But he's going to need to develop his game, and that comes with having the right player development system in place. And that's the reason why I would like to see Zion play for a guy like Fisdale. I also see Phoenix being another area. Can you imagine 
him, Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, the style in which they play, fast, up-tempo basketball, I can see him thrive in that market as well. Oh, Phoenix. Please. Stop. New, I'm just saying, Madison, Devin Square Booker, Garden, Madison Square Garden, New York City, if Porzingis gets back healthy, the two of them, that, what would be a hotter ticket in sports, period, than that? I'm number I'm, one I'm, ticket I'm, in sports. I understand what you're talking about, but from a player perspective, you have to be careful what you ask for in this city. Now, a lot of players think they know what comes with playing along in this city, but for a rookie to deal with the, the amount of hype and attention that will come on the shoulders of Zion Williamson right out the gate, that's a lot to handle. I'm not saying his shoulders aren't built for it, because I potentially think they are, but that also plays into a lot of the development well, of the character the I young think, player can be. Let me ask you this, guys. If it's Zion, oh, sorry, Stephen, if it's Zion and Porzingis, right, what are we talking, a seven seed? Yeah, we're still talking a seven well, seed. Well, as, as a rookie, eight however, seed. you have to look at upside. Porzingis is potentially the best player in basketball. I'm not saying he'll get there. I'm saying you can't rule that out with a seven foot three guy who can shoot like him and play defense like him if he's healthy and continues to improve. Remember when last seen, he was still getting better. He was already a top ten player. And Zion Williamson's another guy. I'm not saying he'll get there. Mm -hmm. It's a long shot against anyone becoming the best in the game. But when you see his talent package, you go, yeah, potentially he could be. Two guys like that, both of whom we just really haven't seen it before. I think On the same team, both young. I, I, I think the most important thing to point out about Zion Williamson and what he needs, he needs to be in an environment that's going to foster his love for the game. One go. of the things that you have to guard against is like, and this is one of the reasons why, basically, Max, without even saying it, you might have been so ecstatic at the thought of uh, James Dolan uh, selling the Knicks, which is what Ian O'Connor's uh, uh, article alluded to a few days ago. Because what you have is the business operations of Madison Square Garden in the eyes of some people, at least in years, plat in the years past, deflating the fervor and enthusiasm to play the game because business gets in the way.